Crystal Sheldemose, there was a debate on whether the ban on uh, seal fur, on the seal skin, should be obtained or not. What's your opinion about the whole case? Well, I'm being a Dane. <laughs> well, I'm very happy with the result uh, of the vote uh, in the plenary on this uh, seal question. Years ago, we made a ban on export and import of seal products, but we made an exemption for seal products. And the vote in, in the plenary this week said that we stick to our exemption for uh, Inuit uh, seal products. And I'm quite happy about that because I believe that we need to help uh, Greenland and Canadian and other Inuits uh, in order to obtain a good uh, livelihood. And, and we do that by saying their seal uh, skin is uh, legally in Europe. But the question is whether it's uh, connected to cruelties, the way that uh, baby seals are slaughtered. That's been the picture turning around almost the world saying no more. Well, that's true because one uh, back in 2008, 7 and 8, when we made the ban, it was due to these horrible pictures we saw of baby seals getting uh, ripped for the skin without being killed properly. We do not and did not want to see things like that. So therefore we said we don't want these kind of fur products in Europe. Uh, but we also made an exemption for uh, the seal uh, products coming from Inuits from Greenland and Canada. And I'm happy that we still have this because their hunt uh, and the products they're making are uh, sustainable according to Greenpeace and according to WWF. So I think and I believe that we should help the indigenous people uh, in order to obtain a livelihood. Reading the amendments um, between the Commission and the Parliament, I was a little bit astonished that it seemed, and you may correct me, that the Commission was much more mentioning uh, Article 13 of the uh, Lisbon um, Treaty, mentioning that animals are sensitive, uh, sen uh, sensitive uh, species. What's your opinion about uh, that, that the Parliament seems to be more reluctant on that than the Commission? Now, well, the Parliament is a strong supporter of uh, uh, animal welfare. But if you take a look at the seals in general, the seal population is not a threatened uh, species. So, so we're not, we, we don't have to protect the species in general. Uh, what we don't want to see is, is a cruel hunting uh, methods. And that was what we saw with the baby seals from Canada. Uh, the hunting methods uh, they are using in Greenland and in, in the Inuit societies around uh, Canada, they are sustainable and they don't have the same problems uh, when it comes to animal welfare. And that's why we are in the European Parliament wants to, to send a signal to these Inuit communities that we don't mind their seal products because this is okay. But apparently, seen from my perspective, the Commission did not really understand the situation in Canada and, and in Greenland when it comes to the Inuit situation. When you hear Juncker talking about the migration, what do you see? What kind of picture do you foresee Europe will be witnessing? Well, at the moment, I see pictures in my head of people uh, uh, standing at railway stations, walking on highways. Uh, I also see the pictures of, of this young uh, boy who died, uh, who drowned, uh, lying at the beach in, in, uh, in Turkey, etc. I see all these horrible pictures. But I also see a willingness among the Europeans to try to help, not all, uh, on an equal level, but most of the Europeans wants to do something, uh, and uh, and that's good. How do you see? How could we compare the situation in uh, Great Britain and Denmark, where there is a lot of skepticism, uh, so both against the uh, EU as such, but especially against the migration situation? Well, there is. At the moment, I see a tendency among some populist parties, especially on the right side, who combine uh, anti-immigration policy with anti-EU policy. And apparently, uh, many voters like that. So uh, they, it's kind of a, you know, a, a golden way to get uh, more votes. That's dangerous. And I hope that uh, in these countries, my own as well, that we find a good way to, to solve this problem and not letting the extreme right decide how to tackle this refugee crisis. The Pope has suggested that all places within the Catholic Church shall open their doors and take in a refugee family. Would you open your doors for a refugee family? 
Well, I'm not sure that I would open my own personal door because I have a very little flat. But of course, I have already given a lot of money to different organizations in order to help. Uh, and I think that my country has a responsibility to act. And we are already doing a lot. And we have done a lot for refugees over many, many years. The situation in Denmark is though uh, that even though we are helping a lot, uh, we also have a very uh, rough tone in the debate about refugees and, and, and I think that it means that many people believe that since we're talking not that nice about the situation people believe that we're not helping either. In Denmark we have a dropout at the moment when it comes to for instance questions about refugees cooperation with Europol and and and. The referendum will take place the 3rd of December. What will you vote? I will vote yes to an opt-in uh, model for Denmark. I believe that it is important that we in selected areas are getting closer to EU, uh, for instance when it comes to Europol, uh, or uh, a lot of uh, regulation for companies, uh, but also for in, 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 in civil uh, questions, uh, if you inherit it or if you're getting a divorce or in child questions, etc. So I want Denmark to become closer to, the, to Europe in these areas and therefore I'm going to vote yes. There has been a debate on whether to use or not to use um, food from cloned animals. What's your opinion? Well, I certainly believe that we should ban the use of products from co cloned animals. Everything tells us that it's not a good idea. Again, the animal welfare of the cloned animals are horrible in general. Uh, the technology is still not uh, completely developed. It's extremely expensive and it's not sure. And even the European Food Safety Agency, EFSA, tells us that they don't have enough data to tell whether these products are safe or not. So I can find no reason why we should uh, say yes to uh, products from cloned animals in EU. Maybe in 20 years, I don't know, but at the moment we should have a clear no. That was what we debated uh, the other day, and that is what uh, the majority of the parliament voted for. But uh, how about second, third generation of cloned animals? Couldn't that be saved? Well, uh, at the moment we don't find the necessary proof that it is okay to use uh, second and third generation animals from clone uh, yeah how do you say it? yeah <laughs> second and third generation we have no uh, valid data for these uh, animals as well so therefore there is no reason and we don't think that there is a market for this anyway so we want to say no thank you in eu what's the main objection you have from an ethical standpoint or from a food uh, quality standpoint? Well, maybe from an ethical uh, point of view at the moment, uh, because uh, I don't see a need for uh, of, for, for using uh, cloned animals uh, due to the uh, animal welfare question. But I don't see a, a request from the market for this either. So why should we say yes to uh, using products from cloned uh, animals at the moment? I will not in general say no for the future. Let's see how it develops and, and let's see how the technology develops. But uh, at the moment there is no reason and therefore it was a clear and an easy no from my side.